the main concepts to grasp are remove ground from the coil so that it can produce spark and close the path back to the battery so that it can charge. If you get nothing else from this, that's the main gist of how it is actually supposed to work. The next circuit we're going to look at is the engine run and engine charge. So what, what keeps the engine running, allows it to run and keeps it running, and also how does the battery stay charged. So we're going to start at the battery again and work our way up. And we'll look at all the circuits that affect whether or not the engine will run. And on this 1882 engine run um, is primarily uh, just controlling the spark. So it's going to be controlling this coil, whether or not that coil gets a ground. And then the engine charge circuit, separate circuit, is uh, basically just controlling whether or not this regulator that regulates the voltage from the stator, whether or not that regulator can complete its path back to the battery. So interrupting either of those will cause either of those not to work. The key switch is what pretty much determines whether or not either of those things are going to be live. Now there's other safety switches and stuff involved and we'll get into that in a minute. So starting at the battery, you've got your ground, you've got power coming out, you get a ground here, which would be larger, and then another uh, positive wire there, which would also be larger, and go out to the main post here. And then from the main post, we go into the fuse. This is just like the main uh, power supply for the engine crank system. And then from the fuse on this black wire, we go back into the switch. So the system starts the same way. You can see we've gone through here, through the fuse, out to the switch. So we get to the B terminal on the switch, on the black wire. If you turn the key one click forward, you get the run circuit active with lights. So what you would have is battery, power coming in, black will connect to this red and white wire on the R, and then also not labeled in this diagram is B will also connect to L on this blue wire, which goes out to the headlights and taillights. So you're getting battery voltage through the switch, out positive, uh, the positive wire would be blue for the headlights, there's a ground, and blue for the taillights, also grounds there. So the lighting is very simple, it's just battery to L. Uh, and then the run circuit, what it does is it puts your battery 12 volt positive onto this red and white conductor here. And then the red and white conductor feeds several different circuits. The first circuit that it, that it shows here is that it, sh it feeds the voltage sensor on the red and white wire. So it's going to come out of here on that red and white wire. You can see it there, actually. And then we're going to come over to the voltage sensor right here. And we got a red and white wire. And if you look down here, there's your red and white. And gray goes out to the indicator to tell you whether or not the voltage is low. So, in addition to the voltage sensor on that same wire, you're also coming up here and going out to the hour meter and feeding some of these other indicators down through here, which are not necessarily important for the engine to run. And the engine will run without the hour meter hooked up to. On the other side of it, you have this portion, which runs over to here and connects the alternator on the red and white wire back down to the battery. And you can see that physically here. So coming out of that switch, we get that red and white wire, comes down into the harness, and look what we got here. 
So there's the plug that connects the chassis of the tractor out to some of the engine components. So here's the stator. That's part of the wiring that goes there. There's the voltage regulator with a wire going back up. And then here's the coil with another wire coming back up. So the wires on this side of the plug are Kohler engine wiring colors. The wires on this side of the plug are the Cub factory coloring. So the red and white wire here is connecting the output of the regulator, which is this center wire here, this black one. So you have your AC terminals here on the regulator, and then you've got the DC coming out. So here's the DC voltage coming out. And if you look at this plug, that black wire is connected to the red and white. And then when the switch is turned, red and white also connects back to the battery so you can charge. Pretty simple. The yellow wire here is part of the kill circuit. So the yellow wire, if you look at the diagram, and we'll get into this shortly, when we see magneto here, that's the coil, and we see a yellow wire there, you follow that yellow wire, you're trying to give it a path back to ground. So, if this wire sees a ground from any place, it's going to connect to the white wire on the magneto, and when that sees a ground, it won't jump the spark plug to make juice, it'll just go straight to ground, so you lose spark. That's the whole purpose of the yellow wire, is to ground that thing so it doesn't spark. So, with the key switch in the position that it's in now, you can see this G right here on the green wire. That's ground, and you see the yellow here from the magneto, that's what the M's for. That yellow is not connected to G, so M and G are not connected right now, which means if everything else is good, that magneto there should produce spark and the engine should run. There's no fuel control on this one, there's not a fuel solenoid, so to kill the engine, you have to ground the magneto. So, that red and white wire, let's go back to that and then we'll get down to the magneto again. So the red and white wire also, in addition to connecting the, uh, the voltage regulator, also comes up this way over to the PTO switch on the number 5 terminal. And if you look here, it goes over to the reverse relay to provide the main supply that will eventually go out to the PTO. So you look at your PTO switch in here, you see the red and white, and if you look over the reverse relay, you can see some red and white wires there too. And you got some splicings. A lot of these uh, jumps and splices occur like at the connector, even though it doesn't quite look like that in the diagram. So for instance, the reverse relay that we just looked at, the red and white wire, there's actually two wires there because of the splice, but in reality, the splice occurs right here at the connector. So, so that's going to feed power out to your reverse relay, which gets into the PTO system. It's an entirely different system. None of, the, none of this stuff after this point has to work at all in order for the engine to run and charge. Uh, so that, that basically covers the red and white wire circuit. Now, in order for the engine to stay running, a couple things have to happen. The first thing is the key switch has to make, sure, make no contact between the M and the G terminal. If these two are connected through the key switch, the coil won't produce any spark to the spark plugs. And if you follow that yellow wire back up to the seat switches, and those are bypassed on this one too, um, you'll see that that yellow wire goes through this normally closed seat switch, which means if you're not sitting in the seat, this path makes a connection, and that connection comes down into the interlock switch, which is the brake interlock, on the orange wire. So we know we're looking at the yellow wire from the coil, the magneto, 
And then we're looking over here at the orange wires on this switch. So if you look at the back of the interlock switch, you've got another set of contacts in addition to the engine cranking contacts, which have been bypassed on this one here. You have this set of contacts here. And this one will connect the circuit back to ground. Why does it do that? If you look, the interlock switch wants to send the orange wire back to ground. So when it's when your brake pedal is pushed in, it interrupts that path. But when the brake pedal is up, it gives it a path to ground. So that means you have ground that wants to get back to the magneto to kill the engine if the brake pedal is up. When you get back into the seat switch, and the seat switch says, well, this is normally closed. So if you're out of the seat, and the brake pedal is up, then it can pass through here, back up into here, and then it finds its path back to the yellow wire, which goes back to the magneto. And if we send a ground through those switches, back to that thing, on that white wire, we'll kill it. But that's the design intent. These are safety switches, that's why they're there. I think that pretty much covers the engine run and engine charge. Again, the main, the main concepts to grasp are remove ground from the coil so that it can produce spark and close the path back to the battery so that it can charge. You get nothing else from this, that's the main gist of how it is actually supposed to work. Now there's a lot of indicators and other things in here that I skipped, but they are not critical in order for the unit to function. So that should do it. We'll move on to the most complicated part of the circuit, which is going to be the PTO. That guy. And uh, we'll go into some of the things that allow or don't allow that to work. So we'll be back.